Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at Peter Carey joining Wee Knives in the design team, uh, Shrade Bolo gift, yes, to me, and then 10 great gift knives. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from last week was from B. Ash on my shower knife short, which has gotten a lot of traffic and a lot of comments. And he says, don't you think a shower knife is a little ridiculous? Put a handgun in a Ziploc bag and stuff it behind your shampoo and conditioner like every other normal adult. And I say to you, B. Ash, here, here. I like knowing that there are like-minded weirdos out there. Um, that made me laugh. It's a good chuckle. It's funny how that, uh, that particular short has gotten uh, a lot of comments and uh, a lot of, you know, lighthearted comments. But my, my uh, uh, fixed blade carry short has gotten a million not a million i shouldn't i shouldn't uh i shouldn't do that exaggerate the numbers it's gotten many many views more than any other video i've done and a lot of them are people commenting on the legality of it and and so i just i veer away but thank you so much for commenting thank you so much for uh for watching and participating it's great and b ash love your comment all right let's take a look right now at a pocket check Today in my front right pocket, I had the Crystal Aurora. I love this thing. This is designed by Ivan Braganetz and uh, imported to the U.S. Uh, by Levon. You know Levon from the Knife Nuts podcast. Well, he has a company from Russia with Levon, and he brings these really cool knives over. A lot of them, uh, if not all of them, uh, designed by Ivan Braganetz. Um, this one is uh, great because it's so thin and so light and yet quite, quite strong. Uh, it is a um, titanium frame lock, as you can see, but it's got milling, uh, milled uh, sort of rows of jimping all along it in fashionable strips uh, that really grip the hand nicely. Uh, it's very light. Uh, the scales are thin and it is pocketed out so that it makes the thing real light. It also resonates a bit when you open it, but the real star of the show here is that gorgeous blade with that huge fuller in the middle. Um, it's very thinly ground here. I got some schmutz on it, but it's very thinly ground. And then you add this fuller to it and uh, you just get zero resistance on the stuff you're cutting through. This has a, it's a really great blade. Uh, it doesn't just look cool, but that is why I bought it initially. Uh, I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I have to have that. And just so happens that it also performs really great. Uh, I've had this in and out of the pocket a bit recently because I've had to uh, uh, dress, you know, put on a suit recently just for holiday parties and stuff like that. And this is a great knife for that because it's nice and light, but it's also very strong and stylish. If you have to pull it out to use it, it looks cool enough that it doesn't look like you're pulling out a large size tactical knife. It looks like you're pulling out some sort of artsy knife to me anyway uh love that russian design ivan braganets uh so i had that in my pocket today front right uh, i also had on my person the new jack wolf knives venom uh venom jack i love this thing um but you know that's kind of a repeating refrain uh refrain around here i i just love jack wolf knives in general because you you know that it's always going to be a superior build with really great materials. So it's all about Ben's design and what, what he wants to express. And I love this one because you got a couple of factors in it that I really like. I love a Warncliffe blade, especially uh, on a um, traditional like this, traditional knife. And uh, I also love a downward rake to a straight edge or any edge, um, but this one has that. If you look, I'm gonna align the, the spine of the blade with this straight line and you can see the downward angle uh, that the cutting edge has. And that makes the blade really efficient 
at cutting as you pull it through it's kind of effective it works kind of like a recurve you're, you're just gathering material into that into the into the uh, apex of that triangle that you create with the edge of the blade and the material you're cutting and um, and then having that tip down low is just great for any sort of utility cut uh, oddly, I use this as a steak knife and I say oddly because I think of bellied blades as better steak knives, but this is what I had on me. We went out for dinner for uh, my daughter's birthday and I ordered steak and eggs. She wanted to go to a diner. I love that girl. She's a cheap date still. Uh, that won't last forever. Uh, probably uh, a couple of years. She'll be like, take me to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. And, uh, <clears throat> what am I going to say? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yes, that is what I will say. Uh, but this worked great on steak. I was concerned like, oh, I'm going to be dragging that tip against the porcelain plate. Will it dull it? Come on, Bob. It's M390 blade steel. You'd have to do that like 100 uh, million times to get that to start to round over. So uh, it was a great steak knife and it was fun to fun to set aside the nasty wet handled dull saw blade excuse of a knife that they handed me uh, to cut my steak and use this always get the respect of the waiter with that and it's good to have the waiters respect uh because they have power over your food when you're not looking all right next up uh i was a waiter by the way but i'm going on the record to say i never fouled anyone's food even if they deserved it because that's that's not right okay uh next up i had my um hog tooth ruffian i've been carrying this non-stop I love this thing. This is a matte chase knife. Beautiful, uh, excellent Kydex sheath that rides very well. Uh, discrete carry concept. Clip always uh, ships with his Kydex. And this is 154 CM. This is one of his quote unquote production blades. It's something that he has. Uh, he has the blanks water jetted out and then he does everything else by hand. And to him, that's production because his his real bread and butter are his forged beauties. Uh, that he labors over and spends much time on. So these are kind of um, uh, a way to express his designs and and uh, make useful tools uh, w without spending so much time on each individual piece. Though this is a custom and each one is pretty much, you know, labored over, but but he doesn't have to cut out the blanks, basically. Uh, 154CM, great blade steel. I've, I've always loved that. Stays nice and sharp, gets nice and sharp. And uh, these are hollow ground. These, I mean, uh, his EDC knives, I have two of them. Uh, this and a Tanto are hollow ground and make for very great slicers. I mean, I buy them because I think they're cool weapons, basically, uh, to have on me. Um, but they end up being great utility knives. Um, I use the Tanto for uh, feather sticking more often than any other knife now because it's just so nice and thin, but it's very robust. I haven't tried that with this yet. I uh, love that sort of antique looking um, micarta. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if it is uh, actual antique micarta or if it's just made to look so. And then lastly on me for emotional support, my emotional support knife today was the Orion Scorpio. I love this thing. Uh, it is a little chunker, uh, like all good small knives in my estimation. Like all good, robust small knives, let's say, um, it has the full width of a full-size knife. Uh, like my baby rhino or like the um, the little QSP penguin, maintaining that full width uh, on a very small knife uh, allows you to maintain control. Like a, a three-finger knife, if it's full, fully widthed, is easier to use. Anyway... Uh, I find that with this, but I just love the design and the ergonomics of this knife. Uh, it's smaller than the um, Solaris, but it's got the same layout and same great flipper uh, button lock action. Now, these knives, uh, the Solaris and uh, let's say David Cam in general, uh, he's Blade Banter on YouTube and the head of uh, Orion Knives. Um, he was one of the first dudes doing the the flipper um button lock i i should say what i should say is he started doing this before they became very popular recently and uh so maybe a, a bit of forethought there that's kind of cool a little bit of visionary uh ism this is 14c28 and a very stylish and and beautiful 
clip point blade with that jimping up front. And that's not just for dramatic effect, but of course, that's what initially drew me to it. Uh, but David was showing me it's great for opening boxes where you want to control the depth of your cut. So you just sort of use that jimping to, to uh, bite into your finger and then you can control the depth. I want to go that deep. I want to go that deep. A uh, lot of uh, good reasons for that jimping there, but of course I just think it looks cool. And then you have that fuller there. Great knife, uh, great feel in the hand and, uh, and build and beauty. And like the Solaris, this will, this will have more um, uh, pieces available to customize it. So this is what I had in my pocket. What were you carrying today? Let me know down in the comments below. I always love to find out what people have because it's, uh, well, it acts as an inspiration. Uh, and uh, I always like to see what people are carrying. Who knows? Maybe I end up carrying them too. Actually, I'm just putting these on my desk. I should close them because uh, I could regret something right here on camera. So I'm going to close these up as we move on. I want to talk about uh, the Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway. Um, which uh, because of the holiday season and because of obligations of mine and Jim has been a little bit cattywampus, uh, but we'll be giving this away on December 22nd, uh, which is a week later than we ordinarily do. We tend to uh, give it away on the third Thursday of the month. This beauty comes to us from Dave, this old sword blade reviews, which I'm not going to call him a collector anymore. I'm going to call him a curator. He's got an incredible collection and man he's been going off on custom fixed blades that will just make your mouth water they're beautiful uh, his collection is sprawling and his heart is generous and he has shared the wealth with this channel many times but he has this really cool one up uh, that he's uh, given us that we're going to give away for the gentleman junkie knife giveaway it's his way of giving back to the channel and i really appreciate it and this thing is a beauty and i just want to show the box because uh, i love these magnet boxes and qsp's got some great boxes um, I'm not a huge packaging fan, so the simpler, the better for me. And I, I like this, uh, but this one is cool because it's got a, a specs card on it and QSP ships their knives with these spec specs cards. And you can, um, hit the QR code there and see it all online. Uh, it comes nestled in this nice velveteen, um, fitting here. I'm going to remove that. So this is the locust which before I even open it, look at it, it looks like a locust, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, without being, without making the design weird or 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 unergonomic, <laughs> they've turned uh, the, 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 the handle, excuse me, into a locust. Uh, so yeah, you got that upturned thorax here uh, with jimping. You've got a uh, very nice canvas micarta and, um, these sort of milled lines here, evocative of the segmentation on the thorax there. You've got a liner lock with outstanding action. QSP is awesome. I'm really starting to like their knives a lot. I don't mean starting to, but I'm always going on and on about, uh, about Best Tech, but QSP is killing it too. Uh, just great in all grips. I like it in this tip down edge in reverse grip. Uh, because of the belly of that handle. But the belly of that handle also fits perfectly and nicely into the hand um, in the regular saber grip. You've got a nice uh, thumb ramp there, good holes, nice long straight blade. That's what, uh, about four inches, just shy of four inches. Just an awesome knife, the QSP Locust. So this is what we're going to be uh, giving away on the 22nd to a Gentleman Junkie. Of course, Gentleman Junkie is the top tier of support on our patreon uh page and uh you can go there and support at the three dollar the five dollar the ten dollar a month level you can uh, or you can save 12 percent by signing up for an annual um and uh and then every month you get thrown into the into the ring to win a knife and you get a lot of other stuff like extras from interviews those are the best i think that's the coolest thing we offer anyway uh check it out on patreon there's a QR code right there, or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a knife junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. 
Get yours at theknifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at theknifejunkie.com slash shop. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Let everybody know. I like that. I like that, Jim. Nice liner. Uh, So Peter Carey, uh, one of uh, my favorite all-time designers, he's been in the um, tactical knife game. Uh, folding knife game, custom beauties and tactical beauties. Uh, since the early 90s, we had him on the show, uh, episode uh, uh, two, uh, three, 232, excuse me. <laughs> episode 232, sorry, I just reminded m- myself of someone famous. Uh, and he uh, was on the show, great guy. Uh, had a very cool conversation with him about his life growing up in California in the 70s, which sounded so much fun, and coming of age then and learning that he uh, just, you know, well, he wanted to make knives for work, and that that just turned into these incredible beauties. So he is now making knives. I said in the open that he's joined the design team. What I mean is he is now a collaborating artist with We Knife Company with the new Nitro Mini. Now, the Nitro is one of his... Um, very famous custom designs and uh they're taking that and miniizing it they do that i i noticed they do that when they'll take a famous design they'll when they start running it through we knife they'll make a smaller version of it uh i think this is stunning i mean if you're looking at this you'll see a damascus steel blade and some sort of crazy fat carbon and uh a bolster titanium bolster it's gorgeous but what we're really looking at is that classic um, Peter Carey profile. That handle is 100% Peter Carey. It looks a lot like uh, the turbo, for instance. And that blade, you can spot it a mile away. Uh, he's famous for um, his collaborations with Spyderco. See, he did the Rubicon and um, several other knives. I think I have it, have it over here. Uh, but it just really, oh, the Magnitude and the Rubicon 1 and 2 and the Firefly. That's right, the Firefly. Um, so to see him having his, and all of those knives were kind of like, uh, some carbon fiber and, and maybe some colorful G10, but nothing extravagant like his extravagant custom, uh, tactical folders here. We're looking at this Wii knife and they're going to come out in four iterations, one of which or five iterations, one of which is super luxe for like 750. And I think that's the one we're looking at right now. And, uh, you know, it these materials a, a little bit Mr. Furley uh, or Mr. Roper, uh, but but it is definitely uh, sort of Peter Carey in, in terms of how um, luxurious the materials are. You have a very aggressive sort of tactical profile, but um, uh, illustrated or not illustrated, but built in these really high quality uh, luxurious materials. I think it's exciting to see him working with Wii because instead of G10 or, you know, if things are extra fancy carbon fiber, he's getting this kind of, uh, his his designs are getting this kind of treatment. And, uh, well, that's exciting to see. I have a Monterey Bay Knives Turbo, which is one of his uh, designs. It looks kind of like this knife, uh, just kind of blown up a little bit. And, of course, I had to have that fancified uh, by the, the knife modders. They did a beautiful job. All right, so that's Peter Carey and We Knives. Glad to see that happening. He deserves some of that mailbox money, as uh, as Mrs. Terzawola said. All right, Ferrum Forge collaborates with Sencut. This is cool. So Sencut, which is um, Civivi's budget line, uh, is now teaming up with Ferrum Forge. Now, I could be mistaken, but that's, you know, so rare. So rare. I think this is the first... A uh, big name collaboration with the Sen Cut line. Am I wrong? Of course I'm not wrong. Uh, but if I am, please uh, leave it in the comments below uh, nicely. Uh, so Ferrum Forge making a knife with Sen Cut. It looks more like a Sen Cut than a Ferrum Forge, which is kind of cool because that means, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I swear you could spot a Ferrum Forge knife a mile away. They're beautiful, but they they speak in in a very uh, tight dialect. Here, they're expanding the language a bit, and I, I would say meeting Sencut halfway. I, I, necess- I would not necessarily know this to be a Ferrum Forge knife, except for the finger choil 
setup, the two choils and the shape of the flipper tab. Uh, but everything else, uh, there's no void in the blade. You know, uh, there's uh, it doesn't have that sort of drop point shape. It has a more a sheep's foot uh, blade. And then you look at the handle and the handle does not uh, necessarily say anything other than send cut or modern tactical folder. So it's kind of interesting to see them a collaborate with send cut because they've collaborated with the, the higher tiers of the, of the Wii um, line, but also to see them uh, kind of change up their style a little or, or, you know, try something different. That's what I should say. Try something different. This thing's called the Kirill Kirill, and it's got a three inch blade, a 3.1 inch blade. And it'll come in a number of flavors, uh, 9CR. Uh, so it's a, obviously it's a budget blade because it's coming out of Suncut. Exciting news across the uh, collaboration front. And both of those are our Wee Knife Company uh, news tidbits. So there you go. Mm, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, someone, a very generous viewer, sent me a bolo. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to use his name, so I won't. Uh, but I'm going to talk about that knife and uh, thank him. And then 10 great gift knives. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So uh, I remember on Thursday Night Knives having a conversation. I think it was Thursday Night Knives. Either that or it was in the comments. Forgive me for not remembering. But I had a, was having a conversation uh, about Schrade, and and we were talking about my Leroy Bowie, and um, and I was talking about how cool it was and how robust. And someone said, "Have you tried out the the Bolo Machete?" And I said, "No, but I've always wanted to because it looks a lot like a Barong. Uh, that's this blade there, and I love that." And so this this gentleman, we're going to call him Sean, uh, sent me uh, this knife, and it is so sweet. Thank you, Sean. You're a gentleman and a scholar. I really appreciate this. Uh, I have yet to take it outside and uh, use it. We've had a, a, some crappy weather the past couple of days, uh, but hopefully today that changes or this evening. And uh, I'm gonna, I want to take this out and 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 see how it how it works. Um, let me see if I can do this here. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something unprecedented. Check this out. Okay, so it comes with a sheath system that I really like. That's got a strap. And if you're cool, you can carry it like Denzel Washington in the book of Eli. And you can draw it like that. <laughs> okay. So if you're, if you're listening, uh, it's got a, uh, a strap, like a luggage strap that fits over your shoulder. And uh, you can dangle it down low and then pull it out uh, from the low position. And it... And you look pretty cool when you do it. I mean, did I not look very cool doing that? Uh, okay, don't answer that. So here it is. It's got a beautiful leaf-shaped blade. This is 3CR13. And we all go, oh, 3CR13. But actually, we've proven with um, the 3CR on the mule, black mule Bowie from Red, uh, Red Rider, from Rough Rider Knives, that 3CR13 is a really good outdoor blade steel. It, it really kept an edge. It's tough as hell. It kept an edge while I was banging it around trying to, you know, trying to see what it could do. And it did great. And then um, it turns out the the outdoor knives made by Cold Steel to be sold at Walmart are also 3CR13. Three, three and we saw Jimmy Slash batter those things. Uh, so I, I guess 3CR isn't like six worse or eight, or, I'm sorry, five worse than, what is it? 8CR13 MOV. Oh, God, see, math, math in front of the camera. But uh, it's actually just a different steel, and it's tougher. I guess it has less chromium and more of something. And, uh, yeah, it works great. So I'm very excited to take this out. I want to I show you the handle. I love the shape of that handle. 
this bird's beak here, and then the, the extension of this um, really aid in chopping. So obviously we know the bird's beak holds your, your hand and grips your pinky and really, uh, but having the handle extend forward gives your palm a place to not only sit, but to arrest the motion as you're chopping. So you get that lever action in your hand. Um, this has a, uh, a nice big handle and it's uh, a, a rubberized sort of material. I got to say, when I showed my wife this, she was like, ooh, that is my size. She loved it. But then when she picked it up, she was like, mm, it, it's just a little bit big in her hand. So uh, so this one is still mine. <laughs> but uh, now I know to look for something that's, what is this, about a 13-inch blade. Uh, and just, uh, what is this? Yeah, yeah, it's a 13-inch blade. Just a great size uh, for work and also for defense. I mean, this would be a cool thing to have in the car, in the in the truck, though. I don't have a truck, but what I mean is if you have a, like a, a truck and you find yourself in the woods and stuff a lot, this would be a great one to have. Uh, I do want to show off that angle here. Uh, something I'm always talking about with the Filipino knives uh, is that handle to, uh, to blade angle. It's just downward raked, just kind of like we were looking at on the uh, Jack Wolf knife. And, uh, but it's exaggerated. And then it has that belly. So wicked, wicked chopper this thing would be. And uh, not for nothing, uh, a wicked slasher too. So thank you very much, Sean. I really appreciate this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to post some videos and some shorts with it. I can't wait to go outside and play with it. Uh, and, and bash some, um, some wood and make some kindling and see what this thing can do. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to sheathe this and set it aside because, uh, that's a good policy. That's a good policy. I remember, um, back in my younger days in my forties <laughs> my wife had to levy a rule. No, this was in my thirties. She had to levy a rule, no alcohol and knives because, well, because I used to do that. And, uh, and cut myself. So we've, we've changed that. All right. Next up is a knife that has been, uh, uh drop shipped to me. That's going to be sent back. Uh, or I should say sent along to my good buddy, Jock across the shock who, uh, uh, has some really cool knives on the way to him. I showed off you his, uh, Sigiendu, Sigiendu, uh, man, <laughs> sorry, uh, made by Emerson knives that, uh, really cool fixed blade, uh, with the, skeletonized handle with the celtic knot very very cool little knife and then um, he also had this uh sent here uh, for me to check out and then i'll send along to him and it is a spiderco lil native uh what a cute and cool and capable little knife now i i have not flicked it but like two or three times so it's not broken in uh that is for jock to do but just beautiful beautiful little knife. Now, unlike uh, the classic native um, or the native five, it is not a lockback. It is a um, compression. It has a compression lock. Uh, so, whoa. so when this thing breaks in, it'll be a smooth little, little, you know, smooth little scalpel like blade. Yeah. When it pops open nicely, let's see that cutting edge is, the cutting edge is two inches, and then you have another half inch there for the 50-50 choil. Nice handle. Let's see. I can get a full four-finger grip on it with the uh, with the choil. I mean, no one on earth is ever going to use this knife like this, probably. It's built for that choil. So you get a lot of, uh, you get a full grip and a lot of good cutting in a very discreet little package here. This is a nice knife, man. And if you look at this, let's see, is this? Yeah, S30V made in uh, Colorado. But if you look at that edge, it's just perfect. It's perfect. And I know a lot of companies do perfect edges, but it's just striking me right now, maybe because of the black coating. But man, Spyderco, they just do a beautiful job. Their, their stuff is just awesome. Look at that edge. It's just gorgeous. All right, Jock, this is on its way to you shortly. Thank you very much for letting me check it out. I love the feel of brand new Spyderco G10. It's like uh, 
just a little bit grippy, and I like that. Uh, okay, last up. <coughs> Excuse me. This was sent to me by Kerry of Off Grid Knives. Man, he's like a he's like a dealer. You know, Lou Reed, waiting for my man. He's like. A, he sent me this. This is so cool. This is the Raptor. He knows I like this Raptor knife uh, with the audaciously odd but incredibly useful blade. Well, they just came out in the Coyote uh, dress. So it's got this beautiful gray wash handle. I mean, gray wash blade. I'm sorry. And then a Coyote tan handle. Uh, my favorite color combination uh for the off-grid knives. My Stinger XL is in this uh, coloration, and it's just so handsome to me, that gray and the tan. Um, I, I know I've talked before about how it reminds me of uh, driving into Ohio. Whenever I drive to Ohio, it suddenly turns gray. Not that it's not beautiful during my stay, but it always is gray and rainy when I show up. And the fields look like this gray, or like this tan, and the clouds look like that gray anyway uh you know sentimental guy uh but just an awesome knife you got this big row of jimping on the top the blade is already thin but it's also very tall and very thinly ground so you get you get this is one of the best um of the slicey cardboard off-grid knives and they are all slicey cardboard knives to a knife uh, even their fixed blade knives um, they're just, I don't know how they just get them super thin behind the edge. Now this little hawk bill at the end of this, so they call it a hawk bill. I call it a recurve Tonto. It's just the recurve is in a different spot. Uh, but this is for cutting into packages is just insane. It's so perfect. This little scoop there. And then this long flat is great for long, just cuts through boxes and stuff like that whatever you're cutting this would be great for carving um sticks too feather sticks if the wood is soft i don't know i don't i don't like doing that with um with folders these days but this would be really good for that because you can bear down and really you know you, it's a good size for that and you can really push your energy into it just a great blade i love the uh the gray pocket clip as well um, this thing is a pocket hog, though. Oh, wait, let me show it off with my tried and true uh, black, black, uh, blackout raptor. So there it is. There it is. Awesome off grid raptor knives. All right. Let's take a look now. Let's do this. Let's take a look at great gift knives. Th these would make great gift knives right here, but they're not on my list. They're not for everyone. Not that all of these are for everyone, but these are less universal. I'm actually going to say this is a, these would actually make great gifts because they are different. Um, so anyway, putting those aside, let's take a look at this list of 10 great gift knives. Now, I'm going to start off with Civivi. Why Civivi? Because they're cost effective. You can get uh, great Civivis and now Send Cuts, but I have less experience with the Send Cuts and they have less variety. Uh, but Civivis are high value knives. You're you're spending most of the time uh, under 80 bucks. And uh, most of the time, uh, yeah, most of the time under 80 bucks, you can get dressed up versions of them, of course. But uh, the variety of size, design, uh, there are collaborations and all of this. Uh, my favorite of all of them is one of the earliest and that's the Praxis. This knife um, in this beautiful uh, wood handle to me is the ultimate expression of this knife. I've seen it uh, in Micarta. It looks great. I've seen it in all the different G10s. I mean, it just comes in a bu bunch of different uh, handle materials. But to me, this wood is just stunning. And I can't remember what it is. Rosewood, maybe? Uh, next to that, Black Blade. Incredible. Uh, this, uh, a lot of Civivi knives are hollow ground. And that's one thing I really like about that brand. Uh, this is not. This is a, a high height flat grind. But you're starting off with very thin blade stock and you have a, a broad leaf shaped blade. So that thinness behind the edge is, is as if you have a hollow ground blade. And with this generous choil here, you could sharpen this up <clears throat> uh, a bit and, and still be using that edge for a long time to come. 
uh, when these first came out, they had gold liners or blue liners, like a anodized or not anodized, but like shiny. And it just, they didn't appeal to me though. I recognized that I liked the, um, profile of this and then time went on and I moved on and they made a, you know, kept on with this. And when I came back and revisited the knife or, and the design and actually bought one, uh, I was so happy with how many different versions they had of this. So this is a great knife. This one is nine, nine CR 13 or yeah, nine CR. Uh, very nice knife, very nice blade steel there. Um, okay, so next up, great gift, gift knife. This is for a knife lover, for sure. Um, this is the Ritter Hogue RSK uh, Mark I. In this case, it's the Mini, and uh, it's it's a little pricier. You're going to spend uh, yeah, over 150 bucks for these, but the reason this is a great gift knife is because if you know someone that uh, really uses their knife for work, this is a great one. Uh, so I'll start with that. You've got 20 CV uh, blade steel, which is great. An awesome grind and uh, robust, uh, but very slicey grind here from Hogue Knives. And then it's in this great and comfortable contoured uh, and uh, grippy G10 handle. This is an aftermarket clip that I put on just so you know. Um, but also, so a great and very capable knife uh, in a small package as as a folder. And you can get it in this 3-inch version or the 3.6-inch version. Uh, the other reason it's great for a knife lover who really uses their knives is because when you buy this knife, a KnifeWorks exclusive, KnifeWorks.com exclusive, uh, a percentage of that money uh, goes to, well, what I should say is the proceeds of this knife goes directly to help support knife rights because it goes to Doug Ritter and Doug Ritter is knife rights uh, and Doug Ritter and, and some, and the people who help him, but he is the man who, who leads the charge there. And this helps support that effort. So uh, just a great knife all around great design, timeless design at this point. I mean, this is a, a, a modern classic for sure. Uh, once known as the Ritter grip because it was a griptilian uh, um version or uh, uh, alternative made by uh, Benchmade and uh, now it's made by uh, Ritter to to really I mean by Hogue to great great effect I love this knife plus you can also get it in some cool looks this is the purple g -mascus. they have they have red g -mascus, um they have orange and black they have all cool color combinations and that 20 CV blade steel man it is awesome uh, just, just a little quick tidbit, the, the whole philosophy behind the Ritter Griptilian and the RSK Mark one is very high end, high performing blade steel in a, um, in, in a budget, uh, friendly handle so that the whole package is, um, easy to afford, but, uh, behaves like something, uh, out punches out of its weight class. All right. Next up is a Kubi knife. Uh, Kubi is a great knife company. I've come to I've come to decide that all of the Kubis I've handled, and now I have one um, that I've been checking out from um, that came in the last batch from Dave, that has gotten such praise. It's a front flipper whose name I can't remember now, but so the Kubis are just awesome. Um, but why why the Vagrant as a gift knife? Well, it's it's got style. It's got and it's got variety. So you've got this blade style, which they call Warncliffe, and then they have a sheep's foot that has a, uh, a flatter, uh, straighter edge and a um, sort of a humped back. And it comes in uh, numerous uh, colors of G10. So you can, you can really kind of zero in on a style. When you go to Amazon, say, and look at this, you'll see it, it gives you many, many options because two blades and a bunch of different uh, handle scales. Great Kubi action. Kubi just has incredible action. The fit and the finish of this knife is really, uh, so far as I can see, flawless. This is a uh, Max Chichuk, Chichuk, I think, uh, design. He, I like his designs, especially this blade. It's just so cool. And it fits in the hand just so nicely deep carry pocket clipped with uh it's not recessed but it's got the flat screws so you don't feel it in the pocket 
just a great design, 40 bucks. It's inexpensive and variety. And, and this is an OS 10 a blade and we know OS 10 to be uh, darn good budget steel. Sorry for the language. Okay. Uh, next up is the Tempest pinion by our good friend, KC of the knives fast channel and of Tempest knives. This thing is a great EDC blade. I, and it's a looker. It's it's very interesting. Uh, I showed this knife off when I was home over Thanksgiving. I wanted to see if it was a polarizing design because I thought it was. Um, but to a person in my family, uh, they all loved it. Oh, that's cool looking. I was like, yes, it is. It is cool looking. And I thought it was going to be polarizing because it's different, uh, you know, and the same but different. And and. Anyway, everyone loved this knife. And so I think you will get a lot of mileage out of a out of this as a um gift knife. This would be a great knife for the gift for the knife lover and the non-knife lover, because I found out that the non-knife lover thinks it's a great looking design too. Uh, but you get great utility out of it, and not for nothing, it's super smooth and um uh fidgety as as the day is long. Uh, it's got a blade shape that reminds me a little bit of the 940, but A, looks better, and B, uh, performs better, in my estimation. 14C28N comes in a variety of uh, G10. It comes in new, uh, neutral, you know, um, JG10, uh, and then black G10, and micarta. And the micarta is nice. It's so nicely contoured. That's the one I have here. And it's a very, very nice grade of micarta that is taking my oils on. And then and then lastly, the cool thing about this knife uh, in this list is pride of ownership, uh, because this is a knife coming from the knife community. This is a, a knife lover, uh, knife, you know, KC of the Knives Fast Channel, a knife lover who uh, persisted and got his knife made uh, to his specs. And man, his specs are great. And it's nice to have a to support someone in the knife community, but it's also nice because this is affordable. It's under a hundred bucks. Uh, if I recall correctly, I, I believe mine was 90 bucks or right around there. So go to Tempest knives and check them out. You can get a, uh, like a re a, a small batch production knife designed by a knife enthusiast for a small, uh, for a, um, manageable amount of money and you get bragging rights because it's it's somewhat exclusive you know not too many people have that knife and then you can show all your cop friends who love the 940 and say look this is an awesome alternative to that overrated 940 in your pocket oh i said it okay next up is the penguin line from qsp now i'm going to start with the garden variety this is the first one that came out and this ranges in in uh, the Penguin line ranges in price. Uh, this is the first one that ever came out. This is the D2 and denim micarta version for 40 bucks. Oh, no, no, uh, like 35 bucks. And uh, as you can see, this one gets a lot of use. Uh, you can see because the micarta under the clip is somewhat pristine. This hangs out on my desk quite a bit and uh, either gets used or handled <laughs> a lot. Uh, so you can go this way. Uh, inexpensively, or you can go up the ladder with QSP and and check out their minis, uh, their mini penguins. And this comes in six varieties, I believe, uh, with their some of their, and by their, I mean QSP's own um, foil, aluminum foil, carbon fibers that they're doing, really cool stuff. Uh, so this is a, a skosh more expensive than this. And uh, you get a nice, small, pocketable chunker. Remember, I was talking about full width being important on a three-finger blade. Well, this is a perfect example of that. Three-finger grip, but it feels very sure in hand due to the width. And uh, great cutter, 14C28N. Or you could go whole hog and get the Plus. The Penguin Plus, which is a titanium frame lock that comes either in a bronzed silver or or you know bronzed untreated or uh blacked um titanium handle or it also has some of those aluminum foil scales that you can get on the on the show side uh black blade or uh, uh um 
satin or stone wash, and then just incredible action. Uh, maintaining the same wire pocket clip all the way through. So a great gift knife, depending on what you want to spend and what the uh, knife person, it, you know, the usage, you could get the garden variety here for a non-knife person. And this would be a great one knife, uh, one knife folder collection to have, or you could, uh, for your knife friends, start getting more specialized here. All right. Next up, this one is from, well, great friends of the knife community, friends of this channel and innovators uh, par excellence. Uh, this is the Demco Knives 8020.5. Uh, this is, uh, you know, ranging from, I believe when I got this, this was 125, but I know there are more now. Uh, but you can get them in many different flavors now. They have two different blade shapes. This is the shark's foot uh, and it's called shark's foot, not sheep's foot because this here is the shark lock, uh, a famous invention of a, a now famous invention of Andrew Demko. He actually talked about this lock uh, for the first time publicly on the knife junkie podcast. At least that's what he told me. Maybe he tells all the guys that, <laughs> uh, but uh, shark's foot and clip point, a beautiful Demco looking clip point. This handle ergonomic and awesome thin, uh, light GRN in this cool gray. I like this gray color, but now you can get it in a number of different colors. A lot of different purveyors have their exclusives of this knife. And of course there are the, the dressed up titanium versions. Oh, so nice. I had one here. I think it was jocks, uh, that was coming through here and it, that was the knife center exclusive that we showed off that had such a great feel with the titanium uh, my brother has the um the clip point version of that of this and it has become his true everyday carry like it's the what he carries on him all the time he comes home and he'll do a wardrobe change and carry around an xl voyager or something like that but to work and he's a very respectable person <laughs> this is the knife he carries except in the uh clip point awesome awesome knife what a great gift that would be to receive and as a matter of fact that's how he received it as a gift from his awesome brother okay next up is uh we're gonna go off grid and we're gonna take a look at the cayman xl or we're, we're gonna just look at the cayman, cayman lineup um they are from inexpensive to moderate um here is the cayman edc just a spectacular knife ergonomically uh it, it's one of those knives that it's almost more comfortable to have it in your hand than not and then you've got this aggressive stylish uh and very useful clip point blade with a with a point that is very low down by the knuckles so you can use this kind of like a sheep's foot or a worn cliff blade but you have a bit of that belly uh there so just a great great design uh, but if you want to get a large one, this D2 blade seal, if you want something larger, they have the XL version, same exact knife, just blown up basically, and feels great in the hand, same great ergonomics, same great blade, um, and a, a great large alternative. Now, this is the one I'm choosing from off-grid, but they have a habit of doing this, um, a very good habit of doing this, where they... Um, come out with a design and when it's popular when it shows popularity they release it in different uh, sizes and there are a number of lines of uh, knife from them that are significantly uh, I should say budget friendly for the best tech builds that they are I mean I don't know why I just put my air quotes up there best tech builds um, but they're just great great knives so whether you choose the Cayman line or the enforcer line or the rhino line you can get it in various sizes and man i think that's a great a great way to do it because you can cover many different uh knife lovers on your list uh with with their lineup okay next up we're going to do a couple of fixed blade knives before we wrap uh because fixed blade knives are important let's not let's not just forget about them because you can't fidget with them because you can it's just more dangerous. All right. First up, uh, we're going to look at a budget fixed blade knife that has been around uh, for quite a while, over 20 years, and has just 
proven, tried and true, and that is the Cold Steel Coben. This is this has been at forty dollars for a long time. Now I think they've crept up to like fifty or something like that. But you know, inflation. Just a great knife, uh, leveraging the the Cold Steel American Tanto uh, Tanto blade. First, I'm going to show you. I have it set up with this aftermarket clip. I know they Cold Steel does make a clip somewhat like this, uh, but I have carried this in the waistband. And even though this is um, a uh, sort of grippy rubberized cray x material it does not stick on the shirt or or print all right i'm going to take it out of the sheath here is the beautiful blade uh a nice uh, uh machine satin on this koban blade koban i think means bodyguard in japanese and they used to have a bigger version of this same handle same thin width look at how thin that is yeah, and yet still has that Coke bottle swell in the handle, so it's nicely contoured. And they make the most of that thin blade. But uh, they had a nice long version of this thing with the same handle and the same blade width. And, and it, I can't remember what that was called, but that one meant boss. And this is like the bodyguard. Great, great Aus 8 blade. You got a thin hollow grind and then and then a tough flat grind up front. Uh, will not break the bank. I bought my sister this one. Uh, years ago when there was some creepy guy hanging around um she never had to use it thank god but i think this is her, still her bedside knife uh, i forgot to ask because i also made her one and i know i know she keeps that around for protection too uh yeah so just a great knife won't break the bank and unique looking and if 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 the person on your list likes the japanese style uh man this is a great a great one i I remember when uh, in high school, when I first saw the Tonto blade, I was like, oh, my God, this is like a, a samurai sword that you can just carry around with you. This is amazing. Um, and I've never fallen out of love with Tontos for a while. They got serious shade from the knife community. I'm not sure why, uh, but they're back. They've been back. Uh, OK, next up, uh, a great, great choice for a fixed blade knife as a gift is the K-Bar. Now, you can go from you know uh, around a hundred bucks to uh, more but there are pretty um th there is a pretty big variety of them that's what i'm trying to get at uh, you can you can choose from different uh, uh, blade styles uh, they have a five inch version and a uh, five and a half inch version this is the classic seven uh, and a half inch version this one was released in the early 90s. My brother gave it to me as a graduation gift from college, I believe. And uh, at the time, K-Bar was releasing a re-release of the original design that was uh, made during World War II. Um, so it has a sharpened clip, which I love. Um, nice and sharp back there. And uh, it's got kind of a kind of a wavy grind. It's not, it's the, the quality of the grind is not, outstanding uh, i see over the years but at the the time i didn't care and i still don't care uh this thing is so sharp it's that 1095 crovan there's a a thin layer of kind of rust on it uh almost looking red in this light maybe i should uh maybe i should flitz it or something but it it's always been like this and uh just a great great knife now the the k bars you'll get now do not have that sharpened swedge and they're really more aimed towards utility at the time it was kind of half and half this is like this is definitely a fighter with that sharpened swedge and um and then later uh through discovering that mostly people were using their k-bars to open up crates and stuff like that and just do utility stuff the, the sharpened swedge i guess went the way of the dodo but i'm sure you can still find them uh, here and there. And also, if if the K-Bar brand K-Bar design is not your thing, you can check out the Case. I want to check out the Case version, actually. Case has a version of the K-Bar. It is also under 100 bucks, and it does have the sharpened clip. And it's their version of K-Bar. It's a little bit different, uh, but it's their version of the World War II uh, version that they made, and it has a straight clip and yet sharp. I got to check that out stacked handle and all okay last up on this list is a if you like the big knives if the person on your list likes the big knives this is a good one because it's time tested and and you know 
it's a tried and true proven knife. You just you can go on many many YouTube channels and see people thumping on this thing, uh, you know, all day long, all year long, and it just keeps coming back for more. Plus, it is just cool and has a little tidbit of history to it. Uh, and it is the Ontario Knife Company SP10 Raider Bowie. I'm going to show it in the sheath because I usually hate nylon sheaths, but this one is very nice. It's got a very, very stout plastic liner, like really stout. And I don't know. I like the stylish stitching. It's like if I can't have a Ferrari with the white stitching on the seat, I can have an SP10 with the white stitching on the sheath. All right. And then here's your blade. Just a big, big, beautiful V44 style Marine Raider Bowie. You've got a big belly, a long straight, and a, a dramatic clip, keeping that point right in the center for thrusting. And uh, that unsharpened swedge still will do massive damage on a back, on a back cut, on a flick. Or if you just hold it like this in reverse grip like this and just whack, whack the back of the hand of your assailant, uh, shatter the bones. And maybe you don't have to use the rest of the blade. Um, but that's probably not what you're using this for. This uh, is a great campsite knife. Uh, you can see I've used it to um, baton some of that really hard kiln-dried firewood that you get at the grocery store. And um, it, it has worked in the coating. And uh, I'm going to do more. I want to wear some of that coating off and um, just because <laughs> I want it to look like nothing fancies SP10. But uh, quarter inch thick, it just pops the, uh, and I'm sorry, quarter inch thick and a saber grind, it just pops the, the logs open as you baton. Uh, this is for batoning. That swedge is a little bit thin, uh, so it does chew up your baton a little bit. Here, let's go wide here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this knife. It's so big. I'll show it over here. So that's a nine inch blade, nice big handle, uh, will accommodate large hands and, and then some. Plus, with that bird's beak, you can come back and use it as a chopper. You can come forward and throw your finger over the guard uh, and, and do close work. This is just a great knife. I, and, yeah, you could use this as a, a combat knife, of course. Might be a little heavy for a combat knife, but it would be very comfortable in those environments. Uh, but just a great, great outdoor knife. Grippy and an impressive large knife. If you If you know someone who doesn't have any fixed blades in their collection, but might be impressed to have one something cool and big and you don't want to break the bank. I say the SP10 is a great choice. I don't know why I slept on it for so long. I should have had this knife for years. I've only had it for months, uh, but I think it's great. All right. Well, that's my list of 10 great gift knives for this year, uh, this holiday season. Uh, there, Some of them might be a little bit off the uh, beaten path or maybe not on other people's list, but I think you see a lot of, of, of very commonly um, praised knives before you. So uh, be sure to check them out. Uh, I think you'll like them. All right. Thanks for checking out this show. Be sure to join us next Wednesday for another uh, journey through my knife collection and through the knife world. Also, Thursday Night Knives. Don't forget that. Uh, December 22nd, we're going to be giving away that QSP Locust. And then also check in with us every Sunday for a great interview. This time it'll be with C.D. Pierce. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, C.D. Pearson of Who Knives uh, from England. Great guy, great conversation. Join us then. Uh, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.